What is up everybody in YouTube land? It is your friendly neighborhood appliance technician Chris and this here is CNG Appliance Television. Thank you guys so much for being with me today. Um, just here in my shop, uh, we're, in, we're still in COVID-19 times uh, and I'm, I've got a little bit of time to kind of, you know, piddle around this shop. And we're using something new here today. And it is this stuff. This Lucas Millhopped AL822. Uh, and let's see, there's the part number right there. 99088. And uh, this is supposedly a rod that will allow you to braze aluminum. Now, there's a whole procedure to it. And I'm going to detail that to you guys. Uh, once I find the leak of this thing in this thing right here, this is something that actually did have a Freon leak. Um, I assume it's back here in the evaporator. I don't know. We're going to put a refrigerant charge in it, and we are going to uh, charge it up, put some dye in it, and see what happens. Um, and I will definitely get with you guys as soon as we figure that out. It's going to be a couple days for me, a couple seconds for you guys. But, uh, yeah, we just wanted to kind of outline the procedure that we're doing here, and um, we'll just go from there. You guys stay tuned. All right, guys, quick update on this thing. There is no refrigerant in this thing. And what I found to be the problem here, uh, actually kind of this condenser fan has locked up down here, which killed the compressor, uh, and it had a uh, refrigerant leak anyway. So I'm guessing it was kind of a problem where it had a refrigerant leak, condenser fan locked up, and then finally once the compressor got hot, that locked up altogether, or it killed the start components. Either way, I'm not interested in saving this thing. So uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to cut the uh, evaporator out of here, and uh, we're just going to use shop air pressure, and I'll show you how we're going to do that in a minute. We'll get this thing out of here, and I'll get back with you guys. All right, guys, here's the plan, essentially. Um, we're going to cut this thing here, and I'm just going to nip that off with a set of cutters right here, this uh, high side line. Um, and so we can just pull this whole evaporator out of here. But I'm not really concerned with this. This I'm going to braze this end off, and then I'm going to put a test port on this area right here to uh, actually you know, facilitate shop air pressure going into the evaporator. Now, 150 PSI is what I've got here. Um, I may regulate it down to about 100 PSI, which is about where these things like to run. Uh, matter of fact, I think that's probably what I'm going to do. And if this thing can hold, you know, 100 PSI for 24 hours with this, uh, with this AL822 rod here, uh, I would call it a good repair. Um, now, I am kind of past thinking that this evaporator has had a leak. Um, I'm going to test it anyway just to see maybe, you know, there's one in between uh, these here. But these evaporators don't usually like to break there. Um, a lot of times it's at these joints. Um, and uh, in the in the curves here so uh, I'm gonna try this isn't the best example to use but it's what I've got so that's what we're going with see you folks in a little bit all right back with you guys uh, what I'm probably gonna do for this test port since I don't use you know this large size or larger size this is a, a quarter inch uh, test port here I don't use these too much on anything because it's it, it's too big. I usually use smaller uh, ones than this, and the only way I would ever use this is uh, on like a window unit or something like that. So first step, as always, to pull the tip out or pull the Schrader valve out. Sorry, so that way you don't melt it. Set it aside. I always do that before I start brazing anything. And uh, what we're going to do is unbraze this joint here. We're actually going to pull that out so because this line here is quarter inch that I cut it off at. And then we're just going to, this is probably okay, but we're just going to braze the end of this so this can also um, hold air pressure. Because I, I nipped it and it should have closed the end here because this is such a teeny tiny little line. Um, I don't know the size of this, but... It's it's really tiny, and you can't cut them or else you'll close the end off. I kind of did a no-no uh, if you're actually caring about salvaging this evaporator or 
Uh, basically, normally what I would do is I would unbraze this connection right here. I would just pull that out because um, there's really no way I have found any way to cut that, uh, that type of line. Uh, that capillary tube is actually what that's called uh, because this was off of a capillary tube system. So, uh, with that, I've got to find my lighter, which is also a no-no. <laughs> Turn our bottles on. Too high. Well, there we go. Yeah. Takes a little bit to get this this tip lit. This is a very old set of torches, so it can be a little bit finicky. But when you're lighting this, this blue part right here is going to be the hottest part of your flame. And you want to touch that to the joint. I don't really think that's hot enough. Turn that up. And all I'm trying to do is melt that solder right there so I can pull this out. There it comes. Okay, just throw that on the ground. That'll work okay. And now what I'm going to do is stick my my Schrader port in. Now I'm going to stick this in a pretty good ways raise this up. Actually, I don't know what I'm doing here. I better pull that cap off. And now, just for this, uh, I'm using my crappy 5% uh, solder that I've got in droves. Um, I don't really use it for things I care about. I use like a 15% nickel. Really easy joint to braise, actually. If I can actually get my solder to flow. This stuff just flows like junk, so bear with me here a minute. I'm going to put a whole mess of solder in there just to more than I normally would and then all you got to do with this guy is just touch his tip just touch tips that was an innuendo all right we've got this pretty much ready I don't have a wet rag with me give me just a second and we'll get this joint finished normally I drape a wet rag over it and then recheck re my connections. Now I'm not going to touch this because it's very hot. So uh, back with you guys in a second. All right, guys, as you can see, I've introduced a hole into this right here. So this would be an evaporator with a hole. And get you guys to where you can see that joint. This thing has kind of shifted on me here, so bear with me a second. Get all my junk out of the way here. All right, there we go. Now, I'm using a very old B tank of acetylene, which happens to be right here. So, oxyacetylene out of the way. regulated at so 
The regulator works, just the gauge doesn't. All right. I'm going to move that down about as low as I can. And what you're supposed to do is kind of preheat the area. Whoops. Try not to burn any any fins or anything. So I'm going to try to do this so you guys can see the best I can. Okay, and you're supposed to just kind of put your solder on here, dab it on, and just let it go. the flux doing its job. And there we go. Man, that stuff flows quick. But as you can see, guys, whoops, hang on a second. That torch really gets after it. But, as you can see guys, I don't know if it'll focus in on that, let's see, yeah, ouch, that is a, can't get this to focus, come on, that is a repaired hole right there. So, we're going to charge this up here. I'll get back with you guys. And I'll let you know what happens. Alright guys, I'm back with you. I've got my vacuum pump hooked up to my evaporator here. And uh, we're going to see if this thing holds vacuum. So, uh, what I've done, uh, low side line is here. Uh, yellow line, middle line is right here. Uh, now we're going to turn this vacuum pump on, open her up, and open the gauges up, and this should suck right down to 30 inches of mercury right here. Get that light off, and maybe we'll start to see things better. We'll suck that thing down to 13 in or 30 inches of mercury. Well, if you have been taught, uh, I don't know, it, comment below. And tell me if you guys have been taught that vacuum is measured in inches of mercury or inches of water. Uh, that's something that seems to vary from uh, new school to old school. So uh, I always say inches of mercury or just inches of vacuum. Um, but we're going to let this thing pump down and uh, we're going to see if it's going to hold for, you know, an hour or so, five minutes, hour, whatever. It's sucking down pretty quick. Never takes long. So. We'll get this going, and uh, I'll be back with you guys when we're done. All right, guys, just for full disclosure here, I actually had to reflow uh, solder to this here and just get the trick down. Basically, what you're going to do is when you get your flame on it, uh, the flux that's inside this rod, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, the flux that's inside this, the end of this rod will melt very quickly and start to make its way toward the hole. Once you do that, you're going to want to switch your flame from right around here. Sorry, I'm looking through the camera to do it. From right around here to the other side of this. Okay. Now, I've, you can see I've, I've put a little too much solder on this. There's a little drip here. But I'm not too worried about that since this is just kind of hacking around and learning for myself so yeah uh, basically what you're gonna do is you know our hole was was right about uh, right about there and if this stupid thing will focus it's not one to focus come on. Hang on just a second there we go okay so what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to put your your flux or your solder right about there the flux will start to melt and then you'll start to move it into your hole 
where your repair is supposed to be and then you'll switch your flame to the other side okay and then that will draw the flux in because flux always follows heat guys okay so when you switch yours to the other side it'll just suck that solder in eventually and you'll have a completed repair and as I've been sitting here talking to you guys this is not this needle has not budged any this is about where my this gauge is a little messy messed up when it comes to vacuum so that's actually right around 30 inches for this uh, and that has held steady here the whole time I've been talking to you guys which for something this size is probably pretty good so I'm gonna call that a completed repair um, let's see is there anything else I can I can talk about about this stuff I don't really think so um, you're gonna wanna stay cool on the side of your heat uh, I would guess propane map gas uh, obviously this old this here old B tank of acetylene did the job um, it's it might even be a little hot for this application but it worked just fine um, so that's pretty much it guys it, it seems to be holding vacuum well enough um, and that is pretty much that uh, I'm pretty happy with this stuff so for what was this for my cost 20 bucks I get uh, one, two, three, yeah, four rods of this stuff and I mean guys for just patching a hole you might use you know an inch half inch probably even less than I used <laughs> you know once you finally get good at that stuff uh, once you finally get good at it I mean you might use a quarter inch of it and end up being fine so I'm gonna call this thing licked guys it, it I'm really happy with this uh, I'm really happy with this uh, the, the way this turned out um, unfortunately I can't do it inside these fins because just of note if you have an evaporator with this style like a GE style evaporator like the old school um, probably best to kind of shrink this stuff back like that from where you're doing the repair and kind of move it back in because <laughs> this stuff will burn off with at least with acetylene and it probably will with propane too it's not very um, not very heat tolerant so these things will melt like tinsel on you know on Christmas um, so you can just kinda you know maybe see if you can split this stuff like this because it's just kinda curly cute around here you don't want to bend it too much um, and figure a way to get into this stuff right here and and you know make your repair the best you can um, what I would suggest doing is clipping one of these probably and just kind of moving it aside probably about that much if you can um, and I may hack around with this and develop a better method for that um, I will holler at you guys when I did I just really wanted to do an easy area with this stuff to kind of get myself acquainted with how this rod flows and uh, and how this stuff works so um, again just for reconfirmation that is same place we left it that gauge is so I would say that's a completed repair so thank you guys for watching I appreciate you so much and take care y'all